Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 17 in verse 11 to verse 19. Luke chapter 17 in verse 11 to verse 19. I read, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, verse 12. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off, verse 13. And they lift, lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Verse 14. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Verse 18, were there not any, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except for this foreigner? Verse 19, and he said to him, arise, go your way, your faith has made you what? Has made you what? Another translation says, your faith has made you well. We'll pray for the blessing on his word tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, I want to continue the series that we started talking about the nine laws of effective marriages and relationships or the nine laws that undergirds marriages and relationships that works. On Sunday, I began by talking to you about the law of what? Can I hear everybody say that? The law of celebration. And what does the law say? States, it states that what? Whatever you celebrate does what? Appreciate and whatever you criticize. Aha. Uh -huh. Because celebration is a language of what? I didn't get you. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> celebration is a language of significance. Hallelujah. So we've been able to state that clearly and we have to move on to the second law of marriages and relationships that do work. Now let me quickly state here that the law of celebration focuses more or focuses more on people because Jesus said I came to my own and my own received me not. So the law of celebration deals with how you deal with people. If you don't know how to celebrate people, it is very doubtful if you will get the best out of your relationship with people. Is that okay now? All right, so the law of celebration focuses on people. But I want to share with you the second law, which is almost similar to the law of celebration, but a little bit different in the sense that it does not focus on people, it focuses on what people do. Is that okay? And that takes me to what I call the law of gratitude. The law of gratitude states that if you are thankful for small things, if you are thankful for small things, you will attract big ones. If you are thankful for small things, you will attract big ones. If you learn to celebrate small things that people do, you will attract bigger things from the same people. In essence, every human being has the capacity to respond to praise. I'll say that again. 
Every human being has the capacity to respond to praise if given to the person genuinely for something done. So the law of gratitude focuses more on what people do and focuses on people. Are you getting the difference here? It's one thing to celebrate you. It's another thing to celebrate what you do. Is that okay now? If you keep celebrating me and fail to celebrate what I do, it's going to begin to affect my performance. Are you getting what I'm saying here? If you don't learn to celebrate what I do or you keep celebrating me, I will feel good about me. But eventually I'm going to start having problem with my performance or my performances because I don't yet have your genuine opinion about what I do. Hmm. I'm going to break it down. Don't worry. We're going to take it down a little bit. Zoom it funnily down into our marriages and relationship. But let's start from a broad concept now. Let's start from the generality and get to the specifics. Now, it affects every aspect of our lives. Now, whether you are a parent, you have children, uh, you are single, you're about to go into a relationship, or you are someone who's already married, the law of gratitude is going to help your marriage if you know how to apply it, or it can hinder your marriage if you do not know how to apply it. I like the words of a woman called Melody Betty who once said that gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. You can't beat that. I quote, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. Turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity, it can turn a meal into a feast. That's what gra gratitude can do. It turns a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger to a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So let's get down to this thing called gratitude. Let me begin by referring you to the scripture that we have just read. The Bible says Jesus Christ met with about 10 lepers. Am I correct, sir? Met with about 10 lepers. And of course, they all had a need. And the need was for a friendship with Jesus that will result in the opening of their eyes. <laughs> because every relationship is determined, basically, the end of every relationship should be for mutual benefit. If we praise you, you must do something in our lives. So they came into a relationship with Christ, which resulted into him giving them an instruction, saying to them, I wanted to go to the priest. And as you go to the priest, oh, go and show him yourself and all of that. And the Bible says on their way going, leprous men, sorry, ten leprous men. He said, on the, and the Bible says on their way going. That was when the miracle happened. It was on their way. The Bible says that all of a sudden they discovered that they were healed. And when they became healed, the Bible says one of them decided to turn back. Now he was supposed to go to the priest and show the priest, hey, hi priest, I'm healed. But he said, how can I go and show myself to the priest when I've not shown myself to the person that God used to make sure that I become, become whole. Oh, come on. Are you getting something here? So the Bible says that this man decided to stop. Instead of going forward, he decided to come back. And he said, Jesus, I came back just to come back first to you. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Please watch this carefully. I am not coming back to say, Jesus... You are the son of God. That's celebration. I'm not coming back to say, Jesus, you are the son of David. What is that, sir? Celebration. I'm not coming back to say, Jesus, you are Lord. That is what, sir? Celebration. Are you getting what I'm saying here? 
I'm not coming back to say, Jesus, you are mighty. That is celebration. I'm coming back to say, Jesus, whatever it was that you did, it has translated into the cleansing of my leprosy. I came here specifically to show my gratitude to you for the thing that has happened in my life. Oh, come on, Lord, have mercy. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I think I need to get down to your level. Praise God. So the point here is very simple. It is, when it comes to gratitude, it's all about recognition. Is that okay? Gratitude is the language of appreciation and recognition. Take away recognition, you will not have gratitude. Take away recognition, you will not have gratitude. So gratitude is the language of appreciation that comes as a result of what's up. That comes as a result of recognition. Praise God. And one of the things that gratitude does is that it inspires individuals and lead them to greater performances and greater commitment. If you appreciate someone for something he has done, that has in a little way added value to your life. What you compare from such an individual is a commitment to do much more. Are, are you getting what I'm saying, sir? I must celebrate God for some of our members here. Some. Huh? Pastor, I mean, some of them is like love text. You know, as if they're they having love, sharing love messages with their pastor. Pastor, you don't know how that when you... Now, listen. Listen, when you come around and say, Papa, wow, Papa yes, this message was powerful. Is that okay? I consider that more a celebration. But when you say, Papa, what you said, that gets specific to me. It shows me you were listening to something. Are you getting what I'm saying here? And, and you know, when I get those kind of texts, sir, that tells me that, sir, on specific terms, on specific grounds, you said this and it really affected me and so as a result of that i decided to change my mind there's a lady here that i'm giving my time like nothing else now because that lady deserves it you know why sir i finished preaching and that lady said pastor while you were speaking she said that there are some things i've been committing i've been getting myself involved with but when you were speaking you made this statement said pastor i decided as a result of that statement to make a complete turnaround and then she called me and said pastor this is how far i've gone based on what i told you and then she called me and said pastor not only have i decided to cut off from this i've decided to be the first that would turn my family's lineage around not only that she called again and said let's go on some days of fasting and prayer so that god would transform the day. now you couldn't believe that it was the same girl who told me the day she first of all spoke to me that girl was in a situation that you cannot compare with the spiritual woman that you are now listening to and I said to her, whatever the journey is going to be, I'm going to be there with you. Because there's something about gratitude. Gratitude provokes continuous performance and identification. I'll say that again. Gratitude provokes continuous identification and performance. So if you want to inspire, if you want to inspire motivation in your partner, learn to use the language of gratitude. Hello. For, for, for instance, as a single brother, if, man of God, if, I, if, I, if I'm, you know, I'm not yet married, and I see a sister who, you know, s sings on a Sunday service, sir, come on, the law of gratitude says, I should just walk up to her and say, sister, today you sang exceptionally well. Do you know what's going to happen in our church if we, be, you know, now I see people sending text messages saying, I celebrate you. I celebrate you. I don't know if you've started seeing that. But you've not started sending that. So what has happened to you? Huh? Start celebrating each other. Pastor said, and I like it. I'm like, man of God, that was superb. My pastors, I don't think, I'm, I'm not saying anything that is totally new to my pastors. 
Of course, I don't even need to say that. You know, I, I do it publicly here. You understand what I'm saying? They preach a sermon and it's wonderful. The right thing to do, sir, is not tomorrow. Say it there. Some of you are so good at catching people that are doing something wrong, but you've never caught them doing something right once. Your ministries catch them doing wrong. You saw, you see what you did now. See, see how you arranged the house wrongly. But how about the day she got it right? Why not just say, sweetheart, you got it right today. Some of you have a gift for the recognition of error. But you don't have a single one for celebration. Not a single one for recognition and appreciation. I was going to travel out of the country and the first thing I did was to call two women that I believe very strongly in their sense of judgment. Very, very practical women. They are down to earth, uh, unbiased and unattached. So I needed to get their sense of judgment. And I was going to be keeping in touch with them even though I was not going to have my phone number shared everywhere. But I was going to be getting in touch with them from abroad because I need to have a clear sense of judgment about what's going on in church. And I didn't want to have the sense of judgment from among those who are part of ministry because that would be a biased approach to judgment you know particularly if i'm asking somebody who doesn't like the other pastor preaching he made the pastor that message was bad though you know <laughs> we don't have that kind of thing here is that okay praise god so while i was outside and, and then I, I after sunday service in the evening i made a duty i just called hello ma how are you how was church today and you know the next thing i just said pastor sam you have done an extremely wonderful work your pastors are just exceptional wonderful and I'm like, maybe I should take a week more abroad. And, and you know, when I came back, I said, okay, fine. This wonderful praises that I'm hearing, let me sit down and see it myself. And when I came and I saw Pastor Sunday smoking scriptures like something, I was like, boy, oh boy. I said, is, is that the same Bible that I'm reading that Pastor Sunday is tearing apart like this? Then I came on a Tuesday to see Pastor. In fact, I came for a Tuesday prayer meeting and I saw Pastor Isaiah ministering to people. I mean, prophetic, clear prophetic revelation. The Lord is showing me something. The Lord is showing me there's money inside your pocket. And I'm like, wow. And the person said, yeah, there's money inside my pocket. I'm like, oh my God. I said, Lord, what kind of prophetic is that from that day? I said, no, no more. I said, man of God, you are in charge of that meeting from today. I shall no more show up in that meeting. If you don't learn to catch people doing the right, and you only wait to catch them doing the wrong, your opinion judgment will not be celebrated husbands or husbands to be that are always looking for where she's wrong when last did you ever look at her and say sweetheart you're wonderful you did this right you got that right you said that right you, you, you know something has amazed me about you in the last few weeks you have evolved in the last few months you have evolved in the last few years you have evolved when was the last time you stopped just to say thanks the leprosy that was on your partner when you got married along the journey the leprosy has been cleansed but you can't see it oh why did you think i picked the scripture you didn't know where i'm going here. that's what's going on sir men have come into relationship with women when they were both leprous or maybe when the woman had some leprosy that was not comparable in terms of visibility to the level of leprosy in the man because whether you like it or not when we all come into relationship we have certain level of relationship leprosy some visible level of leprosy some invisible is that okay in any case everybody comes into relation with the level of leprosy in relationship when i mean leprosy something that is like a stain but then as we begin to journey together, as we, the Bible said, while they were going, the Bible said they were healed. And there are leprosies in relationship that will not be healed at the big relationship, but along the path. As we commit ourselves to walk together, to stay together, to fight together, to celebrate together ourselves. As we go together, the Bible says while they were going together, they were healed 
Ask Pastor John, he will tell you. Ask Pastor Shell and every other person that is married here. Man of God, the leprosy I came into marriage with about 10, 11 years ago is not there anymore because along the path, some of these things have been dropped. The one my wife came into marriage with along the path, it has been dropped. You see what? I'm not looking out for the leprosy. I'm looking out for the day when it will not be there. And once you notice that one leprosy has dropped, one spot has been wiped off, the others may still be there. Look at your wife and your sweetheart and tell the person, look, I, I want to celebrate you. You know you have leprosy on your forehead. It it's no more there anymore. And that's why I believe that the one on your shoulder will soon clear up. And the one on your ankle will soon clear up. If you don't learn to be thankful, appreciative, recognize the things that are changing in your partner, when will you see the fullness? Let me say this. If you don't know how to say thank you God for what you are doing now, you will never learn how to say because in life, everything will not be over until you die. Why postpone the day of your thanksgiving until after you die? Mary is still dealing with some things and sad. I, I, came, I came into marriage with so many leprosies, man of God. Lepros, spot. You know leprosies are spots, eh? Huh? PJ, some of the spots are hidden. Eh? What do you call it again? Clothes, cover eyes. Ah. Let me touch somebody. Somebody sitting around this. It's like you've got some too. Uh huh. Praise God. Some are on the forehead. Those ones that are on the forehead, they are the ones that are, when you come in, the moment you meet them, you recognize their leprosies. I don't know if you know people like that. The moment you meet, hey, God, oh, I get work to do. The moment you meet them, the leprosies are so visible. And there are some of us, sir, the leprosies are below the neck. And they never go above beyond the knees. So at every time, they are usually what, sir, concealed. So when we come into relationship, the ones whose leprosy is concealed has sometimes a tendency to be very judgmental on the ones whose leprosy is visible. Hello, sir. Visible or concealed, leprosy is leprosy. You get, I get. Huh? Since you get, I get, my friend. Hold my hand. Bam. Let's start this journey into destiny. Along the road, this one will disappear. And, and when you look and you saw, you see that this one has appeared. Sweetheart, praise God. That, that, that lepro, you don't talk like you used to talk before. You have changed to learn to celebrate that. Do you know that when you are thankful over something that has changed in somebody, it creates and awakens, activates the person's recognition system. Are you getting what I'm saying here, sir? It shows the person that progression has taken place and inspires in the person a commitment to change further. Why? Why? Chimaka. While they were, praise God, the leprosy is in. <laughs> Sir, you see, the goal when they started out, when Jesus joined them, can, can we consider this leprous people as five couples because they are ten? Hallelujah. And Jesus was considered to be Pastor Isaiah, who is in charge of wedding. Ah. On the day, Pastor, you don't know that's what you join. Every, every wedding you conduct, sir, you are joining two individuals who are certain levels of leprosy. <laughs> Amen. Concealed and unconcealed. And on that day, sir, when we start the marriage, we begin the journey. Some of the leprosies will not vanish in the first year of your marriage. In fact, can I challenge you in the name of Jesus? Stop trying to deal with the leprosy in your mate. You will frustrate yourself. You won't enjoy your marriage. And that's why many of you at the marriage, you have lost the joy already. Because you entered into marriage with a preoccupation to wipe out leprosy. Because the more the leprosy di diminish, the more you feel good about yourself. Because your own leprosy are concealed one. They are leprosies that are well managed. They've been trained not to misbehave. 
Your leprosies have taken etiquette, lessons in etiquette. Eh? Praise God. You are angry. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, no, it's okay. No, everything is okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> leprosy is manifesting. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But your sweetheart, because her leprosies are, are visible, she's angry now, like Peter, she will shout. What is wrong with you? You are not cultured. You are not mannered. You are not mannered. You are not mannered at all. Eh? See the way you are shouting. Yes, sir. Because she has visible leprosy. You know what I love about Jesus? Of all the disciples of Jesus, if you were the one that was to choose your successor, of all the disciples of Jesus, you have Peter, a garrulous human being. Peter can talk before he thinks. Peter's leprosy is noticeable from afar. 50 meters away, you can notice where the leprosy of Peter is. But there's one man. I love the man. His leprosies are not visible. Very, very hidden. The name of the man is Judas. He has his leprosy hidden in strange places. And those leprosies normally show up in strange time. They are masquerades that don't come out any time. They show up once a while and they call colossal damages. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Collateral. <laughs> When Jesus was to pick his successor, I thought Jesus would look for a quiet, organized, articulate, meticulous, ethical, etiquette base. Someone who's got how to walk right. Someone who's got mannerism on tables, table manners. Someone who knows how to. Uh, handshake. Yeah. <laughs> Little God, I thought, particularly because for me, someone like Peter fasted this talking attitude without thinking. He has manifested it to Jesus. I, I, will, I will not let you go. We are, we are going to die together. And then when it was time for test, he betrayed Jesus. Someone like that should not be the head in the ministry. If I was Jesus, I would not appoint such a person who doesn't have organizational skills, who does not have the ability to articulate, organize himself and think far. Why will I not choose him? Because I can see his what, sir? I can see his leprosy. Then you will now make the mistake, go and carry Judas. Because Judas, Judas doesn't talk. He has what I call concealed leprosy. Very calm. Very quiet. <laughs> if our sisters in church are praying to be like her, Sister Judas, be, my God, man of God, I have sisters who kneel down. Oh God, oh God, he knows this man of God. I remember. <laughs> oh God, Heavenly Father, make me like Sister Judas. Lord, you know that I talk a lot. Father, make me. Make Sister Judas is always very quiet. Lord, make me. Lord, I'm holding on to the horns of the altar. Make and sister Judas is always the Holy Spirit sister. She, she. <laughs> I know. Sister Judas is the Holy Ghost sister. The scripture, hallelujah. She, she, she has learned the language of the church. She has learned the behavior of the church. Unfortunately, the people that are attracted to Sister Judas are usually brothers who are blinded to the fact that a leprosy may be hidden, but it is still there. So if, if she comes to church, her skirt, you know, her skirt is not the normal skirt that brother sister puts on. It's a little bit above the knees. She's the type, she's the type that when she comes to church, you know she's in church. She doesn't have to talk, but you know she's around. Her dress is, speaks it all. If you ask our group people to dress uniformly, our uniform will be exceptionally exceptional among the uniform. Are you, are you going to say now? Tell him 
to dress uniform with other brothers and we are all putting on white shirt, green ties, black suit. Let every come of black suit, green tie, he will use black suit, he will use green tie, he will use white shirt, but he will stand out. Unfortunately, these are the kind of brothers and sisters because you see, she likes her nails to be well done. She loves God, but she also likes to look good. Huh. So she doesn't hide her leprosy. She doesn't like her passion and her taste for good things. The rings are there. The blings are there. The are there. Everything. See, if you see me, this is who I am. I don't believe in pretense. If I like a nose ring, I'll put it here in your front. So don't think I'm, I'm going to come to church without it and after service, I'll put one. Uh -uh. You know something I like in our church recently? During morning glories on Saturday, I just saw some of our brothers coming with Nika Boga and Sanders. And honestly, they look better than I am. And I'm tempted now to come to church with Nika Boga on Sunday to preach. But I know you will judge me. But you can't judge them. You see what's going on now? Double standard. If they can, why not me? What is no? That's the leprosy we are talking about. Yeah. And so, sir, when a brother wants to marry a holy godly sick brother, somebody just sent me a mail today. Say, Pastor, please, what do you think? How would you advise me? I'm, 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 I'm engaged to a lady right now. Say, but Pastor, because I see myself going into ministry. Say, I see myself. I'm, I'm going into ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> He says, so pastor, it's not a simple matter. He said, pastor, the problem is that I will want a lady who can sing and a lady with ministry material. He said, unfortunately, he said, unfortunately, the lady with me, she loves me. She is helping me. She supports me. He said, but pastor, she can't sing. I now sent him a message back. I said, how many pastors of mega churches do you see their boss? I said, won't you leave that one to the young girls that God is sending to you? And the young guys that God is sending to you? I said, why don't you look for a, a wife in your, in your wife? And not a singer in your wife. If you have a singer, she may not turn out to be a wife. But if you find a wife, she can learn how to sing. So when I see the way she packages, ah, this lady is worldly. My one of my brothers in Lagos, I will not mention his name. Very wonderful brother. He's been in our church. He's married to a doctor. You know, while they were courting in the university, people came and met him because he was the president of the campus fellowship. And this lady is the type that on campus lose the medical school. I go there to preach. You know, this lady is the type that when she's anywhere she's going to, she's on her shorts. You understand that, sir? Short, singlet, you understand, know handless, you know, stuff like that. And she's always with headphones and, you know, stuff like that. Surely happy girl on campus. Medical student. This brother said, God said he should marry that girl. And he loves her. Brethren began to me say, bro, what is wrong with you? A man like you who has a great call, will you hunt a woman like that? she will derail your ministry can't you see how she dressed can't you see that her leprosy is visible look at our other sisters here see how they comport themselves see how they you know see, you know, see, see how they see I, I, and the brother said well I see what you see yes. there's nothing more she'll be hiding from me I, am I talking to somebody here Oh, come on, come on, come on. I know you're all trying to pretend. Uh, she hid it from you. She made you believe she was okay. She was nice. She can't kill a fly. Unfortunately, now you're married. Uh, and there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> you shall endure. Amen. You shall receive the spirit of endurance. For the Bible says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you a comforter. Now, receive the ministry of a comforter. 
you will not run out of that marriage and she will never commit adultery to excuse you out of the marriage the Lord will keep her from adultery that you may remain in the marriage for the rest of your life and enjoy the comfort of the Holy Ghost can I have an amen everywhere guess what now sir my brother is married to this girl they have wonderful children this lady is one of the finest women that I've ever seen that loves God loves God she has extreme love for God the Bible says that they started out together Woo, I like this leprosy visible leprosy hidden my own is hidden my girl's own is visible and sometimes the danger is that when we go for meetings, I want to like, hey, just keep quiet. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, so because I am afraid for the visible leprosy, I'm afraid of him. Are you going to say that? So I control discussions. I control our appearance. Are you getting what I'm saying here now? I'm always scared. Guess what, sir? Because of what I'm doing, I'm not enjoying my marriage. Instead of enjoying the woman God has sent to me, I allow the presence of leprosy, which I also have, to become my obsession. Are you getting what I'm saying? So much that the obsession with leprosy has taken celebration out of the relationship. In the best of us, there is our worst side. And in the worst of us, there is our right. There's something to celebrate in everybody. So the Bible says, as they began to walk together, that's what happens in marriage. Are you excited what I'm sharing with you today? It's a walk. PJ, you just turned eight years, man ago. Pastor nine. Pastor Isaiah, seven. Pastor Shim, six. They can victim. Eight. Jesus. They can carry the sir. Eight to eight. Fifteen minutes to eight. Hey. Hey, hey. Lord, have mercy. Elder Jacob, sir. Ten. Hmm. Ask all of them. The degree of leprosy in both parties at the beginning of the marriage. Is that what we still have now, sir? It has reduced. Re I mean, it has reduced. But is it totally wiped out? this morning what was the reason for the conflict the manifestation of leprosy but you see we understand that marriage that, that's why I said oh Holy Ghost help me he said go and show yourself and the Bible said while they went it's not marriage is not a sprint it's not 8 minutes 56 seconds. It's not using bolts. Marriage is not using bolts. Marriage is marathon. Do you have energy for a long walk? It's a walk. I'm excited. It's a walk. Enjoy the walk. Don't let the leprosy, the weakness of your spouse, don't let it overshadow the Sir, you know what I love about Jesus? He said to them, go and show yourself to the priest. He didn't say, please be looking at yourself to find out if your leprosy are still there. He took their eyes away from their leprosy and put it on the priest, the destination where they are going to. Sir, it was during that obsession with their destination that they suddenly realized that, ah, come on, while we were busy talking about, you know, the, the ministry we're going to have, how we're going to go to Kuwait, how we're going to preach in Afghanistan, you know, how we're going to write books, our, our children, they are going to some school in Harvard, not me and you, you know, something, good. <laughs> Your case is illustration. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, but, but you see, please don't forget, say, go and show yourself. 
every marriage begins heading towards a day of showing forth when you tell the world at your 10th anniversary he that told the Lord herself at your 20th anniversary he that told the Lord go and show yourself keep your eyes where you are going to the house you are planning to build together you know we're going to build the house we'll have kitchen it will be a very big kitchen for you there will be swimming pool on top of the house Abby uh -huh. at the back of the uh -huh, fine God will help you you can hang it on top of the house anywhere now listen you imagine the phone in it as we go talking about where we are going to we don't even know what is happening to us are you getting what I'm saying here sir are you hearing me what I'm what I'm talking about here as, as they kept their eyes where they were going to the Bible said while they were on the way There are weaknesses that will not vanish until you get on the way. Your perfectionist tendencies wants it to be perfected before we get started. But the rule of the marriage to get started to get it perfected. Hey, why do you think when Jesus saved the church, why, do you th why didn't he take, him, take the church away? He went to be interceding for the church. He married her here, but it's going to, we are, how many years now, sir? Over how many years? 2,000 years, the church is still on a journey with her husband. Because he will one day present, come baby. Hey! I feel something here. He married his wife, the church, Pastor Sunday. But Jesus understood the rule of marriage. That when you marry a woman with leprosy, don't be in a hurry to show her. And don't put too much demand on her to be perfected from the beginning. Don't put too much demand on your man to be perfected from the beginning. The Bible makes us understand that he said, listen, listen, he said, he said I am going on credit to prepare a house for you. I, I, I know I left you with a lot of there are so many leprosies. I left you with some, so many things. In fact, I am perfect. So what I have decided to do now is to go to my father and tell my father I found uh, but from now she's going to be bearing Miss, Mrs. Oye. Now father, what that means is that don't look at her the way she is. If you want to look at my wife daddy look through me. In essence, since I am righteous before you you transfer my righteousness to my wife. Because I know if I'm out of the way and you have to see my wife, the things she has done, the things she has drank, the places she has been to, the men she has slept with, and the kind of things she has eaten, touched, watched. And if you are to look at my wife, uh, you will not even lie to you. But I stand in your front. Look through me to see my wife. If I am righteous before you, my wife is righteous. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So I transfer my righteousness to my wife. So I declare that my wife is righteous even though she is walking into righteousness. You know what? That is why when I got married to her, I did not bring her to you immediately. Daddy, I will need over 2,000 years to work on her. And I'm not in a hurry. I'll be showing her goodness. Make sure she has a breakthrough. Get a car. I will use my goodness to lead her to repentance. It is by showing her my goodness that I will use to create the atmosphere that will change and deal with the leprosies in her. Are, are you getting anything here? And so he has saved us, but we are still here 2,000 years after. And he said, One day he will present us to the father. I said, Daddy, nine several years ago, I couldn't bring her because there were too many spots. That is why I had to use my own righteousness. I had to present, I had to be, she had to be talking to you. Anytime she wants to talk to my father, she will call my father in my name. 
whatever she wants from my father she will request in my name because it is my name that has credit with my father oh come on are you getting something here can you use your strength to cover the weakness of your spouse or will you be the one that will carry your wife and expose her to your father to your friends to your colleagues so that they can all see her leprosies and then they will say boys what do you marry like this now see which kind of way married like I said, man, that's what I married you. That's what I married. Man of God, sir, look at me and you coming to church. We are still fighting, still drinking. Some of us still visiting. And any time the angels are about to report us to the Father, Jesus will, Jesus will begin to intercede. He can't sit down. He can't rest. He can't enjoy himself because he's committed to praying and interceding until his wife enters into the state of perfection. Do you have the same heart as Jesus? You are the first to nail your wife. You are the first to expose her to your family members. Shame to a man who talks about the weakness of his wife to his family members or to his friends. Shame to him. He is not a man after the order of Christ. Real men who are like Christ will shield their wives. Where they find weakness in her. The, your mother calls you, why does your wife normally talk like her? No, mommy, you know there are two different kinds of people. There are people that are very quiet. There are those who like to express themselves. That's what intercession. He kneels by the side of the father, interceding on our behalf. Meaning that whenever the father says something that wants to make the father say, I will slap this your wife. I will kill this your wife. I will just, no, sir, but daddy. <laughs> daddy, you know that human beings are like that. Daddy, you have not been to the earth. Daddy, you know you sit down here in heaven. I, I know you created human beings, but you've not felt what they felt. I was the one that went there sir daddy i feel i feel i was tempted in every way that is not easy as you think daddy and so but thank god me i live right before you now so daddy can you forget about her let's talk about us the law of gratitude the bible said while they were walking together realized that the leprosy was gone was gone and the bible said he turned back to come and give thanks gratitude is the language of appreciation and recognition gratitude reveals your focus gratitude reveals your focus Not that it reveals your perspective and your perception what you focus on will decide whether you can give gratitude or not sir my worry is that why is it that nine men could not come back to give thanks you know what i perceive the moment they were healed of leprosy they suddenly realized that because they've been leprous they didn't have clothes so instead of coming back to give thanks for the leprosy that has been healed they now began to accuse god for not giving them clothes so the lack of clothes did not make them to come back and give thanks at least for the fact that you now have a body that you can put clothes on. Gratitude reveals your focus. People who are not thankful are focusing on the wrong thing. Check anybody who doesn't know how to say thank you for what God has used you to do or what you are doing in the person's life. Anybody who doesn't know how to say thank you. The person has taken his eyes away from what God has used you to do to other things that are inconsequential or for which you are not responsible. Let me quickly wrap it up this way. If you learn to see the cup as half full, it will become full eventually. If you learn to see the cup as half empty, it will one day become what? Empty. Gratitude reveals your perception. Gratitude reveals your faith about life. Gratitude is powered by thoughtfulness and expressed through thankfulness. Gratitude is powered by thoughtfulness. If you can't think, you can't thank. So gratitude is powered by thankfulness or thoughtfulness and expressed through thankfulness. Hello, sir. You take your wife for granted because you married her. She can poison you. That she has not poisoned the food that you are eating and you are even having cheeks bulging out. Your tummy is bulging for the first time in the history of your life. A woman has come to perform a magic your mother could not perform. Doesn't that, 
you were with your mother, you never had Tommy. It was in the custody of this woman that things began to blow up. Doesn't she deserve a special thank you? Whatever she has added to your food that is bringing your cheeks out, go back to your wedding picture. If you can be thoughtful, go back, Makiku Sibala Baba. Ba. Go back, go back to where you left campus before you met this sister. Look at what your the Bible says, who is it that to saw this house in its former glory? Compared to what it is now. Isn't that a cost? Dick Brush, why you can't say that? I guess. <laughs> if you can remember where you are coming from, what it was like, where you are, what you have, and what has changed, gratitude will become a lifestyle. Ingratitude is powered by comparison. People that can't say thank you are those who compare. Hey, wait, see. wait, see. Yeah. Because you just give me 10,000 naira. That one. People give people 1 million naira. Somebody gave you 10,000 when it matters the most in your life. You just can't say thank you. That somebody help you to take a step that was necessary in your life is worth saying thank you. The person may not help you take all the steps in life, but they help you to take one that mattered the most. Be grateful. Ingratitude is powered and fueled by comparison. What do you do for me? Women, they give their husband. Some men, they buy their wife jetto. Because you buy me one fairly used car. Now you make, make you. Eh? <laughs> Carry your car. See your hair key. Your hair motor. The tires not even straight. Useless something. Eh? Because all those hair clothes you bought from me. How much? Hey! How much is the cloth? How much? How much? Yeah, yeah, rapper. How much? You know, fifty thousand naira rapper. I know where they said that rapper. You say you brought it to me as a gift. People are buying Giorgio. People are buying clothes that was sixteen hundred thousand kobo. Now you just bought me something of one naira fifty kobo. You are ingratitude is fueled by comparison. Fueled by comparison. It is fueled by insensitivity. When you are not sensitive to somebody's feeling, you will never learn to say thank you. That a woman stayed in the kill the heat intensity there. Some of your wives will not tell you the truth. While they were cooking some cuts themselves, some their hands got burnt. One day I just saw my wife, ah, they say, Where did you get? She said, I was preparing your food. Ah, for me alone, you cut yourself. Thank you. Not seeing your baby, giving them some of you men when she's pregnant and she's, I mean, when she has baby and when she has baby, <laughs> let me turn away from there. Take company now. When your wife is breastfeeding, that's when some men will run away from the bedroom. The sweet, I'm sorry, I have studies to do in the city room. Woman's life is thrown off balance the moment she begins to speak. and you you will still want to maintain your because of you everything must continue the way it was hallelujah for you everything must continue the way it was but for the woman her life is completely thrown off balance praise God gratitude is swelled by insensitivity envy and disregard for other people's sacrifice. Ingratitude destroys the commitment and motivation for improvement. Ingratitude creates the atmosphere of complaining, murmuring, frustration, discontent. Ingratitude, if unchecked, can break your marriage, lead to divorce, or end a relationship. If continuously you don't know how to say thank you, somebody bought you, uh, what do you call this, an apple. A man bought you apple. When he was coming back home, he bought you apple. I said, sweetheart, look, I, I bought this. Now, how about I go chop? Carry your apple. In insensitivity. Do you know what it took some men to buy the apple? Do you know what it takes? A, man buy, a woman buys you something. You don't have to say thank you. Sir, for 10 years running now, the first person that puts a gift 
on my table every day, every year when I turn a year new, is my wife. 12 midnight, 12, it has not failed for 10 years now. 12 midnight, my wife will wake me up. Sweetheart, happy birthday. I say, God bless you. And she said, wake up, sweetheart, look, I got some things for you. And she put the gifts there. So the, the most celebrated gift for me on my birthdays are usually the one my wife sends. And I don't take it for granted. I granted, I know that that gift must go back, pressed down, shaking to because a Delta woman does not do investment for nothing. Never. No, a Delta woman does not do business to lose. The higher the gift, the greater the return. Are you going to say, Marago? So when I see the size like this, panic. Panic. One day I said to her, I said, Sister, you don't need to bother. She was like, I, I, you are what you are what celebrating. I'm like, no, you don't need to do that every year. Because I know the repercussion. <laughs> oh, I love Jesus. Every year, man of God, 12. She will keep gifts on my table. This year. Pastor John had to take him to one of the places. She had to go. She was out almost a whole day looking for where she would get the suit that she thinks will connect with me. And she spent so much to buy two of them. Bought shirts to match them with ties to follow. Followed it up with a ticket to go to a hotel and go and just bless the Lord my God that at least I'm becoming old. A hotel room and remind myself that I'm no more a boy. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. I love the Lord. Amen. Be sensitive. If somebody does something small, be, let me say this. And I'm saying that with due respect. How many of you know that the teachings you are receiving here has helped keep you on the straight and narrow path? How many of you know that the teachings here have saved several marriages? How many of you know that people were planning to commit suicide and the messages here has delivered them from suicides? You're not going to sit down like that and just celebrate it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now listen, listen, listen before I quit. Listen before I quit. Make it your culture. The Bible said those who labor over you in the word. Count them of double honor. The scripture demands that you... You count those who labor over you in the world. Count them up. Double honor. But Sunday looked at me the day before yesterday and said, Pastor, please, can I get your bank account? I said, what's happening? I'm under investigation. He said, no, sir. He said, as God is blessing me, I don't want the money to go down. As God is blessing me, I want to, I want to be throwing some things into your life, sir. This is not the day of staying in Yanyan when I used to be looking for 20 naira to buy water. Things have changed, Pastor. And I want my pastor to be the first to feel the impact. Every Sunday I live here, it's those small, small children that will come and gather around me, Papa. They will run out of their class. Small, small children. Have you noticed that, sir? Every Sunday, your children, they will come, Papa, Papa, Papa. They will only, one of the children have refused to go to children's church because she wants to be sitting here to be watching me, a girl of about three years old or four. Oriel, the Kimiko's daughter. She was in London, that small girl, and saw a flyer with my picture on top. In the hand of her auntie, she collected and said, Papa Oye, Papa Oye, I will not give it to you. It belongs to Papa Oye in Abuja. And she brought it to Nigeria. Papa Oye, this is your flyer. It was misbehaving in London. I captured it. <laughs> small, small children, they would come around, Papa, Papa, God bless you. They will hug me. And I said, God, maybe I'm even supposed to be a children's teacher. All oh, these people, they would all be gauging me. Instead of celebrating, appreciating, it's gauging. I will, I will feel you. The food is coming out from your nostrils. You are, you are fed to a state of stupor. What else do you want me to tell you? 
the former excellency his excellency who came here and he said if you are not changed it's your fault what does you want me to tell finances the loss of investment how to make money how to diversify diversify how businesses how to do all of that how to keep your marriages sound how to make it to heaven and your pastors are doing the same and you don't just know how to celebrate them and appreciate the works the law of gratitude and celebration some of you are doing good don't come to church where's my where's my boy today is Sam in church today I hope he's coming up to perform that's why I came I came to watch him perform today and I come to stage that's my boy <laughs> He's performing again. I like that boy. He, he, Sam performs a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. That, that's why I came to this church. <laughs> God bless you, Sam. <laughs> and after, the, even if you go to watch Holy Malam, don't you pay? Don't you pay? Comedy, don't you pay? Where they make you laugh and keep you in your bondage, all the same. If some of the jokes they share with you complicate your life. Attitude. It starts with celebrating your parents. Mommy, thank you for advising me. Don't forget celebration is about people. Gratitude is about what they've done. Identify something somebody has done to make your life what it is. To add a little. I am not responsible for the whole of your life. I'm only here to play a part that God has asked me to play. Celebrate that part. Be thankful for that part. When your pastors minister you, reach out to them and man of God, I thank you. One small girl walked up to me on Sunday, carried one sparkling red tie, pastor. You saw that tie? Good God, I saw the tie like Jesus. I said, I'm going to use this tie on a very serious day. And you, you've been there. I say, complain, Papa. Lord, I don't know why. Papa, Papa, I don't know why. Things are not working financially. Have you? Pastor, for the first time in my life, I was shaken to the core three days ago. Mike Mudok was speaking and God spoke to me. He said, while he was speaking, God said to me, he son, you want to go global? I said, yes, Lord. He said, you are going to sow an incredible break. And I was on the recline at that time. He said, God is speaking to you, you are a pastor. And I'm like, okay now, Lord, <laughs> what is this going to be? And the Lord said, my son, I want you to sow what nobody in the OS lineage has ever sown. Carry $8,500. And I want you to give it to this star once. He said that you might generate for yourself a lifetime of continuous income. And God said, don't think about it right now. Call Daystar. Immediately, I carried my phone, called Daystar's office in London, in America. And I said to them, hello, my name is Pastor Sam. When I was there, I wish like changing my name. <laughs> they said, what's your phone number? I wish like changing the phone number, but I told them the truth. They said, what's your email address? I told them the truth also. They said, so what do you want to do? I said, God is asking me to sow a seed of $8,500. Nobody in my lineage has ever done that at once. They said, are you going to do that at once or instrumentally? I said, the Lord said I should do it at once. As I'm talking to you, it's not nice. I'm not feeling good at all. And the woman said, God bless you, Pastor Oye. Oh, yeah. I said, God bless me. Do you know the pain I'm going through? 8,500, man of God. Say bye-bye to struggle for the rest of your life. Stop looking at me as if I had the money somewhere, 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 somewhere. It's about obedience. I entered the place again today and they said, another $1,000. Bishop to the Bismarck was preaching. He said, the Lord said, some of you ministers, come here. He said, the Lord said, $1,000. I said, God, just last month alone, we did the space of three weeks. God asked me to sow one $1,000 three times. I said, God, what are you doing? He said, can't you see? I'm opening for you a lifetime. <sighs> oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus Because he first Oh, he loves me Oh, how I love Jesus Come on, somebody Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast through your giving and donations, kindly click on the donate button or visit www. 
samoyepodcast.com. Don't forget to join us daily for the Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev. Sam Oye via YouTube channel at Rev. Sam Oye. Also, if what you desire is a change in your faith, family, and financial life, then experience the unraveling ministry of Rev. Sam Oye by being in any of our life transforming services. Log on to www.thetransformingchurch.org for details. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and